Welcome to this video on learning hymns. I'm David Adams and I'm here in Christ Church Taney in Dundrum in Dublin. The main difference between playing hymns on the organ as compared to the piano, the main technical difference is that you use your feet as well. Um, for that reason, it's a good idea to have shoes that are narrow so that they won't splash the adjacent notes. Um, in hymn playing, you use your toes and your heels, sometimes the size of your foot, uh, foot as well. Um, for the less experienced organist, it's probably a good idea to write in your pedaling on the hymns. And there are different symbols for doing this. In this piece, the tune Winchester Old, while shepherds watch their flocks, I have written in the symbols that I use. I use arrows pointing upwards for toes and circles for heels. So in this hymn, I've only got one heel marked in. If the arrows and, he and circles are written above the notes, that's for the right foot, and below the note is for the left foot. So I'll just play the pedal line, and you can see how I'm doing it. So when I'm playing with my toes, I'm slightly angling my foot. I'm staying along this line here. I call, call those my guides. They're the, the equivalent of the black notes on the piano. And they will tell me where I am. So if I'm here against the F sharp, I know I will play an F. If I'm against the B flat, I know I will play a B if I press down. If I want to pray play an A for example, I'll just go to the B flat, come around the corner and play the A. So it's quite important to angle your foot slightly. You're, it's almost like a surgeon with a knife who would be very precise pointing to the, the cut point rather than putting the knife down flat. It's the same with the organ foot that you would not play with a flat foot because then it's much easier to splash and be imprecise. So for precision you need to be pointing at the note with your toe. I always play along the guides if possible so then you don't get lost. You're, I think out here is no man's land because you've no, you've no idea where you are. So these keep you on the straight and narrow. You know where you are. Sometimes if you have a note like in this hymn in the first bar you have C to D. So if I play the C with my left foot up, again, up against the C sharp at that point there, then there's no room for my right foot to go onto the D. So I am forced back. Then I use the heel of my left foot to find the next note. So you probably saw me doing that as I went through the hymn. I go back to the heel and then I know where the D is. When I play on the flats in this piece, I just play on the very edge and that will mean that if I have to play the next adjacent white note that I can judge the angle that's needed to play that note much easier. If I'm um, far over the note it's much further away so it's less economical. I have to move much more distance but also the angle is completely changed. It's much narrower so it's much more difficult to gauge where the next note is. Um, there's only one heel in this particular tune, and that's here. So that's going, skipping a note, so I have to have a, quite a, a large angle in order to go from B flat to C. If I choose another hymn, it will probably be more difficult because most bass lines are very difficult. They're not designed as pedal lines, but as lines for people to sing, like the bass singer to sing. So it, it's the reason why many um, pedal lines and hymns are extraordinarily difficult to play, especially if you want to play them legato, which is the normal touch for playing hymns. A slightly more difficult pedal line than Winchester Old is St. Columba. And in this piece, you need to play also with the ball of your foot on one note. And 
at the back of the, the black notes, which is less usual. So uh, at this point here, you play on the edge of the E flat with your right toe and then the right heel. And at this point here then, you have to use the ball of your right foot, otherwise you will hit off the C sharp as well. Like that, if you use the front of your foot. So you just need to bend the front of your foot upwards and play the C with the ball of your foot. So now you can see why, why it is so important to play on the edge of the flat, because if you're too far in, you won't be able to play that C at all with your right foot. And at the, the end of the hymn, this B flat is played first of all with the right foot and then with the left foot. So the left foot has to take over the note. Therefore, one of them has to be played at the back of the note and the other at the front of the note. So that is why here I have this one circled with an arrow going that way to show that I play the B flat with my uh, right foot at the back of the note. So if I, if I play from here, you'll see that. And one further technique I haven't mentioned is not in this hymn, but it is use, rolling from on the side of your foot. So that's useful when you have two black notes, one after another, and you can play on the side of your foot and then the other side of your foot to get a legato sound. One of the most difficult things playing with pedal is the independence of left hand and pedal. The left hand is used on the piano to playing the bass part, and now it's playing the tenor part. So the left hand and the pedal fight. So there are exercises to get around that in various organ tutors. Hymn playing is also a good, very good exercise to take the, the tenor part and the bass part out separately and practice them. It's like riding a bicycle. You fall off many times, but once you can do it, it's easy. Another main difference between the piano and the organ is the fact that the piano has a sustaining pedal and the organ doesn't. So for the organ, it's very important to play legato to give a nice singing cantabile sound to the music. In the tune Abbot's Lee, it could be difficult to play the soprano and the alto part in the right hand in a legato way. If I just play the first four bars, there's that big jump there. And not only is it difficult to play legato, but it's easy to splash. Um, so a good idea would be to take one or two of those notes into the left hand, which makes it much, much physically much, much easier. It's now easy, physically easy, more difficult for the brain. So might be a good idea to actually mark it in the copy. So here I've done that and shown a fingering. So these two notes will go into the left hand. Here we come to another situation where it's much easier to take the F sharp into the left hand than to try and jump the, um, the right hand. So the left hand in the first bar just plays single notes. In the second bar plays the alto notes as well. Then back just to the tenor and then an extra note in the fourth bar as well. Some hymns are less cantabile and more rhythmic, and then you might decide to use a touch that isn't purely legato. It gives you more rhythm. A good example of that might be Converse, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. If I played that very legato, it wouldn't have the same upbeat rhythmic feeling to it. So it's good sometimes to have space between the notes, a bit of air between the notes, so that you get a rhythmic lift. 
Non legato touch is even more important in contemporary hymns where you often get offbeat moments or syncopations. <laughs> Thank you for watching this short video on learning hymns. As you can see, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but keep going, don't give up. It gets easier, I promise.